Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to use Vedic mathematics to solve some multiplication sums. So let's start off with an example. Let's say you see this. Sum 54 times 56. The conventional way, let's go through the way in which we use it, truly use. So usually we just yeah conventional way would be by multiplying 54 by 6 and putting the value here 54 times 5 and putting the value here and adding up to to get an answer let's use Vedic max now I'm just going to put 24 here directly but I'm going to add 1 here I'm going to add 1 to 5 so it becomes 6, 6 times 5, 30 that was super fast but you may ask if this method is applicable to all forms of multiplications unfortunately no there are two primary rules that you have to consider rule number one is that in both these numbers the left hand side digit, the left hand side value should be the same. It should be a common value. In this example, we have 5. It can be 4, 3 or anything. For example, 33 times 37 or 44 times 46, 74 times 76. That is the first rule. Second rule, the right hand side, both the digits in the numbers right of the, the right hand side digits should equate to 10 if they are added together so in this example 4 plus 6 is 10 it can be in the form of 5 plus 5 meaning 55 times 55 57 times 53 as long as if you take the individual value from the right hand side of each of these numbers and add them up it should be equal uh, it should be equal to 10 so you can only use this if um, the sum agrees to these two prime rules just to see another example so let's just see 35 times 35 the left hand side has a common value which is 3 and the right hand side the values add up to 10 5 plus 5 is 10 so 35 times 35 5 times 5, 25, and here I just add a 1 here. You just add a 1 irrespective of the values or the situation or the type of sum. As long as it agrees to the two rules we had seen earlier, you just add a 1 here, right? So you can add 1 here or here because the first rule states that both these numbers should be the same. So 3 plus 1, 4, 4 times 3, 12. Yeah? So, what if we come across triple digit sums? This just involves two digits. What if we come across something with three numbers? Example. Yeah. 115 times 115. Same rule. 5 times 5, 25. Add 1, 12, 12 times 11, that's it. Now, um, these two rules makes this method somehow very limited. The method we have is so um, useful, so effective, but yet it appears crippled because of these two rules. So what we are going to see now is how we can nullify the second rule. So in other words, we are going to move to another technique which will only leave the method susceptible to only one rule which is that the left hand side value should be common.
So let's see another sum. 36, 9, 35. Yeah? So the first rule is there. 3, 3. But the second rule is unfortunately not agreeable. Because 6 plus 5 is more than 10. So what do we do? We just create the 10. Right? We just make the 10 out, out of the sum, the equation. We just modify the equation. Right? So here I'm just going to keep 36 intact. I'm going to break this. I need a value here which has a right hand side um, number which if I add it to the right hand side of this value would give me 10. So I'm going to need a 34, right? Because 6 plus 4 is going to be 10. And I have to add 1 here because that's how I get 35. I'm, in other words, I'm just breaking 35 into 34 plus 1 and bracket thing it. Right? So, in other words, it becomes 34 plus 36 times 1. Yeah? We can apply the rule here. 24 plus 1, 4 times 3, 12. But we have some left over here, so which is plus 36 times 1, which is 36. So we just have 1, sorry, 1, 2, 2, 4, plus 36. The answer is 1 plus 6, 4. Yeah? So you can actually break this sum in any way you like. I'm convenient with just keeping 36 intact and I'm just breaking 35. You can choose to break 36 and keep 35 intact. As long as you have a sum, a sub sum which in which you can apply the rule we had just seen. And the leftover would be just some simple addition with some simple multiplication. Yeah. So what we had said is a condition in which the total of the right hand side of both the numbers is more than 10. What if they are less than 10? Yeah. Rule number 1 is still there. But 5 plus 2 is less than 10. We just use the same method. I like to keep the first digit intact, so I'm going to keep 32 intact and I'm going to break this. So I need a value here in which if I add to the, which has a right hand side, side value, which I add it to the right hand side value of this number would give me 10. So I'm going to have it to have an 8 here because 8 plus 2 is 10. So I'm, I have to put 38 here, there's no other way. But I got a minus 3. So that it results in 35. So in other words, it is 32 times 38 minus 32 times 3. 32 times 38, I can apply that rule. 16 plus 1, 4. 4 times 3 is 12. But I got a minus some small bit. I got a minus 96, so 1 to 1, 6, minus 96, 1, 1, 2, 0, yeah, pretty simple, just modify, just break any of these numbers in a way which you can have a sum like this, where you can apply the rule, yeah, so ultimately it comes to a point where as long as you have the left hand side value of both the numbers as a common digit, you can apply this rule and solve it way easier than um, the conventional method. Yeah, so thanks for watching. We'll continue in the next videos. We'll go in depth into more of uh, multiplications. So thanks for watching.